Hey guys, so today's video is going to be my review for Gretel and Hansel. But before we get to that, we just need to have a moment, and this might take up a large part of the video, and I am sorry for that. I just really feel compelled to talk about it. So after the movie, I was doing my research as I do. So I was on IMDb, and I was scrolling, gonna look through the trivia, things like that, because that's what I do when I prepare for reviews and things. And I noticed a bad review, and I decided to look into it because a lot of people were saying there was negative reviews out there. I just hadn't seen them. And so I decided to read some of these bad reviews and y'all, I got so mad. So we need to talk about some of these negative reviews before we get to my actual review. So if you're impatient, I loved the movie so much, but the actual review of this video will start at this point, but I do recommend sticking around for my rant. So ever since I saw my friend do a video reading one star reviews of her favorite book, I'll link her video down below, it's amazing, I love it. And I love the idea of it, and I was like, you know what, I wanna read one star reviews on my favorite movie, The Ring. But when I got to reading them, this was like months ago, I, when I read the reviews, the negative reviews for The Ring, they were valid, they were just a different opinion than mine, and it felt weird like calling them out for thinking that they're wrong because I get that all the time. Opinions are not wrong, they're just different. So I know how it feels to be told your opinion is wrong and it just felt weird to do that because they didn't, they had like valid points on why they didn't like the movie and that's fair. So the video was never made. But these reviews on Gretel and Hansel are a different story. So I'm not even gonna intro the reviews, I'm just gonna read the first one and I think you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. And yes, I said first one because there's multiple. Two out of 10 stars, are we really this desperate? Like really? Gretel and Hansel, let's put the woman's name first because what? 2020 feminism? Does this honestly empower you? If it does, then I genuinely feel for your desperation because honestly, none of the women in my life feel any need for this. They also don't go to the cinema. Thank you. So I have to wonder who these political puff pieces are trying to appeal to. They clearly don't make money, but yet here we are, 2020, and still agenda driven. I was honestly hoping the entertainment industry would grow up and start making movies rather than political pieces. <laughs> it's not like I even disagree or agree with your message, it's just not why I watch films. And at this point, if anything, you're turning me away from your opinion with your desperation, not drawing me closer. <laughs> There's so much to unpack with this one here. First off, does it honestly empower you? If it does, then I genuinely feel for your desperation because honestly none of the women in my life feel any need for this. They also don't go to the cinema, so I wonder who these political puff pieces are trying to appeal to. Is he actually implying that none of the women that he knows in his life go to the movies? Does that then mean that we do not need strong female leads or women empowerment or feminism in movies because the women he knows don't go to the movies? They clearly don't make money. Really? Political movies nowadays don't make any money. Wow, I think someone really needs to introduce this man to Get Out and Us because those are incredible movies. Made a ton of money. I think it'll blow his mind. Now, if any of you were also confused by this name switch of from Hansel and Gretel to Gretel and Hansel, why it's such a big deal amongst some men, I don't, I don't know. But if you were also noticing that and confused by it, the director Oz Perkins stated that the reason why he made this name switch is because the movie mostly focuses on Gretel and she's the older sibling in the movie. That's it. Also, since when is having a female lead in a movie a political statement? Is it a political statement when there's a male lead? Just because she is a woman does not make it a political movie. So that was actually the first review that I read and I posted it on Twitter, you know, just kind of poking a little fun. I didn't think that there'd be like a lot more than this one. I thought it was just this one incident, um, but then I continued reading. So let's, let's continue. One out of 10 stars, I will kill you with the dull spoon, which is a perfect description of this film. Ma feminism mixed in with good old fashioned boredom. Was this supposed to be scary? The only scary thing is the misandry. <laughs> misandry in Gretel and Hansel. <laughs> you do know in the original story, Hansel just gets fat and he's about to be eaten by the witch and then Gretel comes in and saves him. So, and I'm, the movie pretty much is kind of like that. So I'm, I'm missing the misandry here. Except there is a scene in the movie where the witch talks about why she's not married. Um, but you know, she's the evil witch the antagonist of the movie, not necessarily your like 
feminist icon that the people seem to think that she is, apparently. One out of 10 stars, more feminist garbage. Why can't a movie just be funny, scary, or action-packed without all the political and feminist bullcrap? This one misses the mark thanks to Holly Weird. Very boring and the lighting is terrible. Just make it Hansel and Gretel and knock the feminist nonsense off. <laughs> Tell me again how it's feminist to put Gretel in front of Hansel in a movie title. That's not empowering to me as a woman. I'm. The movie is Hansel and Gretel, the original story. However, it focuses more on Gretel, hence why her name comes first. And also, there are a ton of Hansel and Gretel movies already. So maybe to avoid confusion, he mixed it up a little bit. Also, the lighting in this movie is impeccable, so I have no idea what they're talking about. Three out of ten stars. He gave a little sprinkle of extra stars in there. So woke. Woke trash that puts the spotlight on Gretel because equality. You know, since the story was all about Hansel. Exactly. The original story is not about Hansel. I mean, if you switched the roles in this movie and put Hansel as the older sibling and the lead, the story just wouldn't make sense. Not to mention it would be way more far removed from the original source material if they were switched. If anything, the movie, how it currently is, is the most accurate to the original story while still being original and playing around with the original story. Five out of 10 stars, no. No, just no. Don't do it, even if your wife wants to. I'm not even gonna comment on that one. Now for the best, most helpful review. I am so glad he came in and gave this really thought out review. Uh, one out of 10 stars. What? Can I rate this movie without even seeing it? Its name is Gretel and Hansel, not Hansel and Gretel. Need I say more? Um, no, you can't review a movie based on its title. So I just can't believe the amount of men specifically. I'm just gonna call a spade a spade and call it what it is. These are men that are offended by a simple movie title as if somehow it is a direct attack on them to have Gretel come first in the title. As a woman who does go to the cinema. Uh, I did not look at this movie and once think, wow, I am so empowered right now that my gender is being so well represented in this movie, so accurate, and there's such strong wit. And maybe some felt like that, you know, there is a moment where Gretel like gets out of a sticky situation, but in no way was this movie meant to be a political statement against men or even a political statement for women. It was as simple as making Gretel the main character. And since when is a female lead a political statement? Was the original Halloween movie political? Scream? Nightmare on Elm Street? Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe those are political feminist movies. Anyway, these reviews made me so angry that I had to talk about them in my review and unfortunately it's taking up a lot of the video. So that sucks. But it's just, I couldn't not say anything because we're in 2020 and there are still people that feel this way about women and feminism in general. And I really fear for their future movie going experiences. So now we are on to my actual review for Gretel and Hansel, which I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this is 100% going to be my favorite movie of the entire year. And yes, we are in February and that might be a very, very bold statement, but I just don't see how anything can top it. And I have very personal reasons as to why I like it so much. And we'll get to that. I just, I want to rewatch it over and over again. I'm going to go rewatch it in theaters for sure. At least one more time. I want this playing in my house constantly as an art installation. I just, I am so in love. It's the most beautiful movie I think I've ever seen. And yes, that's a very strong, bold statement. Space movies aside, they're in a league of their own. Now, are the visuals significantly better than the story development? Yeah. Am I going to make a biased review because the visuals were so amazing? Yeah. But hopefully that won't take away from my review because I will still be talking about the issues that I had with it, mostly about the ending. So that'll be in the spoiler section of this video. So I really appreciated the backstory to why they were in the woods in the first place, this brother and sister duo. And some people said that 
I read in some reviews that they wish they'd forgo, like, forgo all of the backstory and they just ended up in the woods. I really enjoyed the backstory. There were some cool, scary moments within the beginning of the movie. I felt it was appropriate for the era that it was set in. The dialogue was sometimes hard to understand. I feel like subtitles really come in handy, but for the most part, I got most of it. It is kind of like The Witch in that the dialogue is hard to understand, but not as bad as The Witch. I feel like I struggled way more with The Witch in theaters. So speaking of The Witch, a lot of people are actually comparing Gretel and Hansel to The Witch. I think I even made that comparison because it does, based on the trailer, kind of look like similar tone movies. And The Witch had better story development, but Gretel and Hansel was way better visually, if you can even believe that, because The Witch was such a gorgeous movie too. Some are also saying that Gretel and Hansel tried too hard to be like an A24 movie, which I don't see that as a bad thing, honestly. It was different enough for me, and that's what I really wanted out of the turning, is for them to get a little weird. So I just appreciated the fact that Gretel and Hansel did something different and did something a little weird. And more artistic. That's not weird. Artistic is the word I'm looking for. I think it's so much more, though, than a knockoff A24 movie. So like I said, there's a few personal reasons as to why this movie is so beautiful to me, and we're just gonna get those biases out of the way right now. Um, it might get a little weird for you. I, I feel like I can be weird with you guys and like be open and honest about weird things. So my favorite sound in the world is used in this movie. That sounds so weird and I can't really describe it. So I'm going to show you an example of one of my favorite songs. So specifically there, the voice echoing, it just for some reason feels like a little lost in space. It's on my space and chill playlist on Spotify because I just love space noises. And for some reason that sound kind of reminds me of space. That's really weird, but I'm opening up to you. That's my favorite sound in the world. And they use this kind of echoey kind of sound in the movie and I thought I was gonna cry because mixed with the visuals of what was happening, oh my gosh. <laughs> Another thing they do that I'm obsessed with in general is there's a few scenes where it's like the house peak and then some trees and then above the house is like a giant moon. Sometimes it's a sliver, sometimes it's a little more full. I love the visuals of like a giant planet or moon like, look at my phone background right now. So that's what my phone background is, if you can see. And I have a lot of these kind of art pieces, like, pinned in my Pinterest folders, too, because I'm obsessed with the visuals of, like, a planet or a moon. So those two things, it's, like, my favorite sound in the world combined with my favorite visual in the world. Not at the same time, but both in this movie is why I'm a little bit biased. Obviously, these the visual and the sound is not going to, like, be that impactful for everyone, but I just want to throw it out there that my favorite visual and sound was used. So I do want to say that the framing of literally every scene, it was like an art piece, like any frame of that movie could be a painting. And because it's so perfectly framed in every scene, I actually had someone point out to me that doesn't it get a little boring for your eyes or like visually because your eyes aren't darting around. There's nothing guiding them because it's just right in the middle, right? Personally, I didn't experience visual boredom because I was dancing my eyes around. I wanted to capture every little detail. I was looking around because I was so awestruck by the visuals, so I wanted to take it all in. I don't know if that's going to be for everyone, so maybe it's something to think about. If you go and see this in theaters, your eyes might get bored because you're just constantly looking at the center of the screen because of the framing of everything. Also, I want to point out this is not the scary movie that's gonna come out this year. I can tell you that right now. The horror is not gonna be effective for everyone. It's not jump scare galore. There's, I think, one whole jump scare in the movie, and it is a dumb one, but it's in the beginning, so we get it out of the way, and then the rest are pretty much just horror visuals. But I think it's mostly the horror comes from the setting and the situation, the dialogue. There's a lot of spooky stuff going on, but it's not a super, super scary movie by any means. For me, it was super effective and I found this movie really scary. There's a scene in the beginning that actually scared me quite a bit, but I don't think it's going to be for everyone. Okay, so I do want to move on to spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet, I want to talk about my biggest issue with it and that is the ending. So just be forewarned that the ending is not the strongest part of this movie, but definitely go see it for the visuals alone. Okay, so now we're on spoilers, so 
If you haven't clicked off yet, now it's your last chance. Uh, this movie really had me going up until the climax when it was time to actually defeat the witch. We see this room which Gretel had dreamt of before and the first time we see it is when we hear the echoey noises, the voices, love it. And I loved the visuals of this room. It was like a super, super tall room with like white brick and stuff and like a big table. So Gretel is at this table, she's tied up and it is time for the witch to cook Hansel, which happens in the original fairy tale. But this time that the witch is going to force Gretel to eat her brother so she can rid her attachments, embrace her powers, and become another witch that also eats children. Because it turns out that Gretel actually has similar powers to the witch. So Gretel defeats her by decapitating her with her own staff, like a stick, and it has like two little things coming out of it. So she like pins her up against the wall with this and eventually she catches on fire because the pit of fire is right below her and then decapitates her in all but two minutes. And I understand why they did this, but it just felt like it was way too easy for her to defeat the witch because I suspect the witch is all powerful, right? And there is a moment earlier on in the movie where you kind of um, you're getting a vibe that the other witch is becoming a little scared of Gretel when Gretel takes power of the staff that ultimately kills the witch. It's almost like she either saw a premonition of like what was actually going to be happening that Gretel would use this tool to kill her later on or she just understands that Gretel is really honing her powers and she is actually more powerful than she even knows. But it just still felt too easy. I expected there to be a fight or something or at least her to come back in some other way but once she was decapitated in two minutes that was that. So there are little subtle things that kind of lead up to the ending to really understand it. So obviously you're gonna have to pay attention to everything. A lot of people say this movie is boring and slow and I don't agree. There was one point in time where I felt like we hadn't seen a horror element in a while, but it wasn't boredom, it was just a build up, I guess you would say. But some people I think will be bored with this movie because it is not a very horror type film, but the first three quarters of this movie was definitely the strongest point of this movie and I am so tired of saying that. I feel like I'm constantly saying that the end doesn't live up to the rest of the movie in like almost every review I feel. But hands down this has to be my favorite movie if not this year then at least right now because oh my gosh, this movie. I mean, it is evident in the movie while you're watching it that they spent more time on the actual visuals than the story, but I think there's just enough story and just enough horror to where it evens out and it's all worth it still. But it is definitely more of an art piece than like a story that's like fully developed to the end. I honestly, I don't wanna be dramatic, but I could see this being in my top 10 movies of all time. That's how much I like it. And I even took back my review a little bit when I posted on Instagram how I hyped it up so much because I'm worried if I say that and sound very dramatic and how much I like it, a lot of people are gonna have these super high expectations and then be disappointed because it is not gonna be a movie for everyone. But I'm here to tell you, it's now one of my favorite movies. So if you have seen the movie, please leave your uh, review down below and what your thoughts are and what your thoughts are about the stupid people who are thinking this is a feminism <laughs> movie because I that just blows my mind. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will talk to you soon. Bye.